franktalks.com This program does not represent the views of this station and may be considered offensive to some listeners. This program may contain mature subject matter, including frank discussions of controversial topics. It is intended for mature, open-minded audiences. Discretion is highly advised. This program is entirely independently produced by and is copyrighted by Frank. It is broadcast here under license. You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles, and I'm Frank because I have to be. On today's show, we have the man known as Mark Cunningham, renegade hypnotist, one of the people who helped establish fundamentals in the seduction community, and today he's on Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. Welcome to the studio, Mark. Hi, Frank. How are you doing? All right, and I'm going to start off with my first question, Major Mark. Where were you born? And tell me a few things about your upbringing, your time in the military that eventually led you to being a hypnotist. Well, Frank, actually, I'm a Midwestern American boy. I was born in Adrian, Michigan, uh, which is not all that far from you, and um, spent uh, my formative years there up through high school, um, and uh, basically, you know, shy, self-effacing, uh, way too smart, uh, physically underdeveloped, geeky, gawky kind of uh, American upbringing. Um, I did do um, a lengthy hitch in the military, that is certainly true. Many people have heard the stories that came out of that period. Um, and after I rotated out of the military, then I did uh, multiple college degrees at Michigan State University on up through the master's level and moved on into the corporate world uh, where I became a software architect and um, eventually wrote it out, uh, rotated out of that in order to become a, a full-time professional hypnotist. What was your first exposure to hypnosis? Like, when did you first see it in action and then start thinking, oh, this might be something I want to get into? You know, that's kind of a trick question because once I found out what hypnosis actually was, it turned out I, I encountered it <laughs> basically at my mother's knee. Uh, my first formal exposure to it uh, was at the university where um, I was, uh, I had a full ride scholarship. So I was rotating through all the academic majors and very careful not to complete one so I could continue the scholarships. And as I was working through the P's, I was in psychology and uh, did an internship with a psychiatrist who was uh, on the faculty. And he was working within a large VA hospital. Uh, the Veterans Administration hospitals in the states are the government hospitals that are meant um, solely for the veterans of the armed forces. And we were working with quite a few Vietnam-era veterans who were working with post-traumatic uh, post stress disorder. And the things he was doing with hypnosis in terms of regressing back to traumatic episodes, removing the emotional charge so they could go on and lead uh, useful lives, as well as he did this one fascinating project on time dilation with the Detroit police force so that basically all these policemen who were board stiff, running around, sitting on their butts, drinking coffee, eating donuts, and then suddenly thrust into a life or death situation, they would literally say Shazam to themselves, and the entire world would slow down as though the entire world moved into slow motion, and um, the police themselves would be unaffected, and they could just function normally. So, of course, they were moving at super speed in real life. And when I saw this in action, I thought, oh, my God, I've got to learn how to do this stuff. Now, let's uh, get some of the basics down here. When we're talking about hypnosis, what are we talking about specifically? Do you have a Mark Cunningham definition of what is hypnosis? Yes, there is a thing that we call hypnosis, and what that is, it comes in two parts. Um, the first is you induce a mental state where you are no longer making critical decisions. That is, that you're not making judgments. You're not saying good or bad this is me or not me, this is true or false, you're simply in a realm of experiencing everything equally. Now, the second part of the classic definition is the establishment of acceptable selective focus. What that basically means is they're not being distracted by anything, they just zoom in on whatever is inducing that trance. The reason this works is there's a principle of the mind called dissociation. 
function. And all that is is our ability to use this, this mega-powered human brain to do multiple trains of thought. Now, some of these are directly related to the things that we are observing in real life um, that are concrete, that we can agree on consensual reality. Most of them are not. And so what we do with any hypnotic induction is basically bump the subject off the track of consensual reality and move them into one of these dissociated streams of thought so that all of a sudden they're off in something that seems compellingly real, just as real as anything else, but it is not actually real in the sense that anyone else might see it, hear it, experience it. I've got a question for you now. Sure. One of the biggest criticisms about hypnosis is that it doesn't actually work. It doesn't really exist. The, because the person believes that they're hypnotized, that's what causes the effects to take place. What are your comments to those type of statements? Well, I'd give you a two-part answer. The first is we aren't really operating on things that are real anyway. I mean, think about everybody you know, your friends, your coworkers. They're all moving through the world um, with their own personal blend of reality that is not shared by anyone else. And yet there's sufficient overlap that we can go, oh, okay, there is this thing that we call consensual reality. But all of us are operating on our own little version of reality. And all hypnosis is is guiding someone into a new version of that totally made-up reality that serves the purpose of the hypnotist. Um, now, the, the second thing is that this thing we call hypnosis has been verified. Um, there are a lot of medical studies that are coming out now that are showing how the brain functions under hypnosis, and they're going, oh, look, when someone is, quote, hypnotized, you see the part of the brain that's involved in process, uh, processing thoughts logically just lights up dramatically because that part has to work so much harder when the person is hypnotized. Well, the hypnotist could tell you through experience that, yeah, that logical part is suspended and you move into something called trance logic, which is why you can talk someone who's uh, hypnotized into virtually anything. The, the idea that someone believes in it in the first place, and so therefore hypnosis doesn't really exist, it's just someone who's just kind of going along with your suggestion. Well, if you think about that, that fits the description of hypnosis. Okay, now we come to some of the scary elements of hypnosis. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> now, if... A hypnotist talking on the radio about scary elements of hypnosis? I love this. All right, well, let's see if we can get something to spark our listeners. If I'm in the process of trying to hypnotize somebody, and I get them to start to consider things they wouldn't normally have considered. Where are the concepts of free will and responsibility for one's own actions coming in if people are so susceptible to hypnosis that they would end up doing things they wouldn't normally be or have the capacity to do? We tell all the beginning students that no one who is hypnotized will do something that violates their ethics or beliefs. In other words, you cannot make someone do something that they're not willing to do, even though they're hypnotized. Now, that is a belief system that is appropriate for beginners, because after all, we don't want beginners to get wildly adventurous with this stuff. So we tell them that, they go off, uh, they're confident they can't possibly mess anybody up and everything is fine. Now, in the advanced classes, we tell people that yes, the first law, which is you cannot make anyone do anything against their belief systems or their ethics, that is true. But there's a catch, which is hypnosis has a very powerful effect on belief systems. And if you know this technology very, very well, and you're sufficiently adept with it, comfortable with it, you can, in fact, change people's belief systems powerfully. The and thus get them to do virtually anything that you might uh, dream up talking them into. Um, it's not something that is normally done, certainly not done uh, widely in a therapy um, situation, although you do work with uh, belief systems in order to get people to believe they're a non-smoker or that they can lose weight or that they can accept themselves for who they are. Um, something like um, turning them into criminals, changing their base level sexuality, um, changing their ethics or morals, 
Um, that's something that's typically done either over time or done when you have someone in physical isolation. There, there's an awful lot of studies on the use of hypnosis within cults, for example, to point out exactly how you can do this. So here's a question. If somebody, let's say in a cult environment, has been so thoroughly hypnotized that they're committing acts of violence, to mm -hmm. use one specific example, do you, as a professional hypnotist, believe that that person is ultimately responsible for his own actions if he was hypnotized into behaving violently? The compassionate answer would be no, that someone's been messing with their mind. Um, on the other hand, you have people who um, are not in cults, who are wandering around the street unsupervised, you know, we call them citizens, and they have been exposed to conditioning that has hypnotic elements in it from um, birth. And yet we claim that they are fully responsible for their actions. So it really comes down to, you know, in, in modern life, that which we call normal or sane behavior is that which at least 50% of your social group um, believes in. Um, and that's really the only foundation we have for what is considered sane or normal. It's just what, what is the majority view on these things. So somewhere in there, you can say that um, if, if someone has been deliberately conditioned to do specific things, well, then you can say their free will has been interfered with. But it's also true that all hypnosis begins with acquiescence. Um, if there is not that first moment of going along with the suggestion, then you can't talk anybody into anything. I want to get back to your military career. Sure. I, I know you can't talk about some of those elements. I do have a specific question. Yes. Did you see any combat? Were you actually, you know, firing a rifle? Yes. Do you know if you've ever killed anybody as part of your military experience? Yes, I know for certain that, uh, yes, there is a number whom I have killed in combat. I find it very interesting that in the current model of your life right now, you are using hypnosis to help people li live better lives, to help them clear up some of the challenges they may have inside. And I'm curious, do you think that your experience in the military is a fuel, a motivation, for the type of lifestyle you live now as a hypnotist helping people? Yes, yes, um, in two ways. The first is I do feel that I've got some karma that I've got to work off. Um, and if spending the rest of my life helping people um, is the way it has to be, then that, that's certainly what's going to happen. Um, the second is I learned a great deal of skills about controlling myself and influencing others when I was in my military career. And I have learned to recycle, retask, uh, apply differently those skill sets and those personal resources in order to address the challenge of knocking people out of their existing mindsets and teaching them whole new, better ways of moving through life. Mark, we're going to take a break. When we come back and talk with Major Mark Cunningham here on Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, a man's guide to the emotional needs of women. What would your life be like if you knew exactly what to say and do with women? This book is for the guy that simply wants to learn how to handle women's tests by addressing her emotional needs. By this, you create the type of attraction that will make her see you as the one she was destined to be with. This book will teach you how to get the woman you want and how to keep her. Everything out of her mouth is a test is the Rosetta Stone for men to understand exactly what a woman means when she speaks and how to respond. Is that worth changing your life forever? Buy this book at franktalks.com now. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by From Loser to Seducer by Frank B. Kermit. Ladies, is there a man in your life that got dumped for being clingy, needy, or was told he was a loser, but you still think he's a nice guy and want to help him? He could be a relative or even a friend, and you know he needs the help. Do you want to be the one to give him the gift that will change his life forever? How about the gift of a great biography? Buy him the book From Loser to Seducer by Frank B. Kermit. It is the story of a nice guy who triumphs over his inner demons to find his own hidden power. Help the nice guy in your life discover his inner seducer to find his soulmate. 
Buy this book now at franktalks.com. You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles, and I'm Frank because I have to be. In studio today with Major Mark Cunningham. How you doing there, Mark? I'm doing real well, Frank. Well, I want to change the direction of this interview slightly and bring up the topic of the seduction community. One of the things that I remember when I studied your products is that you always came across as a man who loves women. I don't sense anything from you or, or any sort of misogyny or any anger towards women. You've even said it on a number of occasions. You love women. You can't get enough of them. You think they're like a, a wonderful thing. I think they're a damn fine idea. That's true. <laughs> yeah, in my professional work, especially in the hypnosis work, um, I deal primarily with women. I've done over 18,000 session hours, and out of that, at least 85% has been with women. Um, so you can say that for the past 10, 12 years, I have spent my days talking to women about how do they move through their lives, what are their concerns, what are their opportunities, what are their challenges, what do they need in order to become fully human, what is it like for them to feel feminine and sexy, and what is it do they look for in a man. Um, frankly, I prefer the company of women. I mean, I'll go to these suburban parties, and whenever all the men are out front talking about lawn care, I'm out in the kitchen with their wives because I just prefer to spend my time with women. i got two questions for you. The sure. first question when you say that the majority of your clientele are women, is that a conscious choice on your part, or is it just because in terms of the clientele you're servicing, you just happen to be servicing a large clientele of women? And the second question I have, with the amount of time that you are spending with all these women, you must have a, a unique perspective on the way women think, on their belief systems, and, and generally you have a grasp of the female mind. Now, what, what, what are your comments for those questions? Well, the first part is that, in general, women are far more likely to reach out for professional help than men are. Um, women aren't stoics, they're talkers. And so if they've got a problem in their life and they think someone can solve it, they're going to reach out for it. So your therapy clients, in general, tend to be women. And beyond that, I prefer to work with women. I mean, frankly, men will come in and start going on about their neurotic, uh, half-assed, ridiculous suburban lives, and where I'm willing to talk to a woman about it, basically I just want to slap a man and say, grow a pair, <laughs> which is not something you can actually charge for. So, um, yeah, I do tend to seek them out. In, In terms of uh, my unique understanding, it's I've learned to handle myself around women in ways that they open up. They tell me the truth. They'll sit down and dish with me like I'm one of the girls, never forgetting that I'm also a man. I mean, it's really kind of funny. It's uh, Virtually all the clients will hit on me. Um, all the women I run across uh, tend to think I'm a fascinating guy. And I'm not saying this because I want to just, you know, blow my horn somehow. It's just that I've learned to position myself as that guy. And I've learned that once I get them to open up about themselves, well, the only kind of guy that they would actually open up and be honest and genuine and forthcoming with is somebody that they could care deeply about. And so, bing, there I am. Okay, two more questions for you. The first one is about your male clients. Sure. How much, in terms of a percentile, would you say that when it comes to your male clients, how many are we talking that actually seriously have a real problem that would require a hypnotherapist or some therapy? And how many of them just don't seem to grasp what it is to be a man and to tough it out? Um, boy, uh, you're basically describing the, the, the same guys in both groups. I mean, anyone who's stuck, anyone who has a problem with their beliefs, their behaviors, their emotions, probably ought to go find a good hypnotist and have a little chat about what's possible um, because... It, it makes perfect sense to, to seek out help. Now, it's also true that, it's, well, it's my truth that modern men don't have much of a clue about just sucking it up, drawing on your own resources, stepping out of that resource-poor state, and just getting the job done. You know, in the military, we had this thing called maintaining the mission, which is no matter what happens, no matter how much crap is raining down from heaven above, you still must get the job done. They'd also beat it into our head, which 
something uh, which I've lived by, which is there may be reasons, but there are never excuses. There's always some reason why you're not moving as fast or getting as far or achieving as much as you wanted to. But if there's never an excuse. You just pick yourself up and find another way to actually get the job done. So you're, those two questions are really um, pointed at exactly the same guys. Now you talk about how what it is you do to make yourself that guy, that kind of guy that women will open up with, that kind of guy that women will talk to as if you are just one of the girls, never forgetting, however, that you are a man. Oh, yeah. Can you give me some specifics, so, something specific that a man can model, something that he can emulate to become that guy that women will open up to on that level? Well, actually, if you, if you want the quick and dirty rule, what you need to do is go down to your neighborhood bookstore, talk to the clerks and say, what's your top-selling romance title? Take it home and try to figure out what the hell they're talking about. I mean, the first time you read through it, it's like it's in code. Um, but as you just go through there and soak it up and try to understand it from a woman's point of view, you'll find that they're all about men that they consider um, a great challenge. Someone who is very masculine, someone who is on their way, has their own life, doesn't really need a woman, uh, holds a woman at arm length, but also takes them very seriously, pays a lot of attention. Someone who the woman can pour their heart out to and know that they're going to be treated fairly, openly. Um, not someone who's going to be um, catering to women. I mean, as, as soon as I said, dishing like one of the girls, I thought, oh boy, the boys are going to understand, not going to understand that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the thing is, women love to talk. They love to talk emotions. So they love to talk about themselves. And when they find a man who's willing to listen, who remembers what it is they just said and feeds it back to them, they just go nuts. It's, it's like throwing raw meat in front of Dobermans. <laughs> okay, so getting so basically, read the romance novels and model the main top male characters there? That would certainly be a good start. You also want to get yourself um, a woman who's a friend, okay? Not someone who you're trying to drag off into bed, not someone who you're trying to scam, someone who's actually going to talk to you. Okay, and she will tell you about clothes. She'll tell to you about how to talk to women, what's important. She'll tell you which women are good for you, which aren't, uh, which ones are really available as opposed to the ones who say they're available or say they're not available. I mean, if, once a guy gets at least one good female friend, he is definitely on his way. Female friends, a real uh, point of tension here for a number of men because they have lots of female friends who they end up falling in love with, who just keep saying, no, I just want to be your friend. They're getting rejected. Um, some seduction gurus have certain attitudes that there's no such thing as a female friend. Other seduction gurus talk about how uh, a female friend is one who helps you meet other women, otherwise she's not your friend. The word female friend, when I say that, though, that combination of words to you, what do you think about? I'm thinking about buddies. I mean, I have female friends who like to watch football with me. I have female friends who like to hang out and run errands with me on Saturday. I have female friends who like to have me come over and we'll both cook dinner together. I mean, there, there's all kinds of things that I do with these girls. Um, and there is a certain, what, uh, what's the word, a frisson, a little, um, a little zing of excitement because there's always that possibility, but I'm not pursuing them, and I don't allow them to pursue me. I can just enjoy being a man around them. They can enjoy being a woman around me, and it's just understood that you don't poach on those friendships. I mean, you basically don't want to screw up a friendship with one of your guy friends. Why would you want to screw up a friendship with one of your, one of your girlfriends, right? Instead, Maybe you should listen to what she says and then look around and realize that there are untold billions of other women walking around, many of whom would probably be interested in you if you just got out of your own way. I got an open-ended question for you here, Mark. Yeah. Uh, no holds barred, without having to mention any specific names. What is your opinion of the modern seduction community? Well, it's amazingly lucrative, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> it appears to be huge. There appears to be a uh, unceasing demand for 
advice to guys on how to handle this whole seduction thing. Um, and I find it kind of surprising. I, I find many of the approaches that I've seen out there um, are very mechanistic. They, they seem to be not only techniques that you do to women. Um, the, the more advanced ones are things that you do with women, or they're phrased as you do these things with women. But for the most part, they appear to be designed to recreate in you the kind of person that the instructor is, to recreate within your current life the life experience of the seduction instructor. It's like they're out there trying to clone themselves and say, if you do these things, well, then you will experience my level of success. Well, it's kind of like watching these late night, you know, real estate seminars on TV about if you just, you know, follow my magical plan, you too can live on the beach in Maui. Well, maybe you can, but there's a very low probability of a, a desirable outcome. It's, I don't see enough of what I think actually works, which is help on changing yourself to be the kind of guy that women find attractive. You talk a lot about this in your work, and we're going to get back to this. Um, sorry, I'm getting the signal. we got to go to commercial. Okay. When we come back, I would like you to talk about some of your transformation work. Oh, sure. All right, you're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the Adult Male Virgin Seminars and Telephone Consultations. If you are an adult and want to get a handle on this once and for all, you need this seminar. Being an adult male virgin can be most stigmatizing in today's society. You feel like a failure in the eyes of the mass culture around you, alienated from your male friends who all talk about their sexual conquests, and you must hide this shameful secret lest they use it against you. And the very personal pain, anguish, and despair that cannot be described by words that haunts you every moment of your life. Enough is enough. It is time for male virgins to take charge of their sex lives. Frank gives you the rules of winning in this seminar, the Adult Male Virgin Seminars and Telephone Consultations. Make your first time the best time of her life. Only available at franktalks.com. Frank helps adult boys turn into men. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, a man's guide to the emotional needs of women. What would your life be like if you knew exactly what to say and do with women? This book is for the guy that simply wants to learn how to handle women's tests by addressing her emotional needs. By this, you create the type of attraction that will make her see you as the one she was destined to be with. This book will teach you how to get the woman you want and how to keep her. Everything out of her mouth is a test is the Rosetta Stone for men to understand exactly what a woman means when she speaks and how to respond. Is that worth changing your life forever? Buy this book at franktalks.com now. You want to learn new things? Want to meet new people? Want to discover real possibilities? Listen to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles, in making the world a better place. Be sure to visit our website at www.franktalks.com for the most update information and the latest downloads of programs just like the one you're listening to now. You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles, and I'm Frank because I have to be. In studio today with Major Mark Cunningham. How you doing there, Mark? I'm doing pretty well. All right. In the last interview segment, we were talking about some of the work that you do, tra your transformation work, rather than be a seduction instructor who's trying to create clones of himself, you're actually helping the men involved change or unchange certain parts of themselves to become more attractive men overall. That's right. Can you tell me a little bit about your transformation work and some of the products that you have? Okay, yeah. Um, of interest to the seduction community is something, I developed this approach when I was working with um, one of the greats in the seduction community, Ross Jeffries. Um, and he, Ross was kind enough to invite me out to appear on his seminars for over about a six, six and a half year span. We had a lot of fun working together. Um, our approaches are different, which is probably why we had so much uh, fun working together. And I, I learned from talking to thousands and thousands of these seminar attendees that 
their struggle is not so much with understanding technique, memorizing lines, figuring out approaches, learning where to go, what to wear, things like that. But rather, they were continually struggling with the problem of they, they kept bringing them, their, their old self into new scenarios and expecting that just by mouthing words or using some kind of technique that they were going to get uh, good results. And of course, that's not what occurs. Um, so I did go off and I um, developed my own seduction seminar, which I only gave a couple of times uh, because my whole philosophy is get it straight, deliver it, get it on tape, and then go off and do something more interesting with my life. Um, so we did this class called uh, Beyond Seduction, which was the distilled essence of my techniques. It's, it's a conditioning seminar on how do you change yourself to become the kind of guy that women find naturally seductive. Uh, because I have this very, I have the lazy man's approach to seduction. I think I ought to be able to walk into any kind of setting look around and not only be attractive to a broad cross section of women but to be able to spot the ones that I that who are attracted to me and be able to concentrate them and kind of you know pick the low hanging fruit. Uh, we do have a separate track of course which is my mainstream hypnosis track where we have classes like the introduction to marknosis class. It's a set of conditioning exercises that you can do every day to ensure that you go ahead, you clear out your emotional dead wood, you remove the trauma or limitations or self-sabotage that came out of your past. You get focused on what you actually want to do, the belief systems that will work for you, and then we show you how that you can go through a process where you ensure that you stay on course every day and not only get the goals that you can dream up now, but turn into the kind of person who has an ever-increasing, ever-improving set of goals. Of all the products that you have, if somebody wanted to start today and say, Mark, I don't know where I should start between your products and all the other products out there, what would you recommend as a great starting place? Well, you know, people people look at all the products I have available and go, oh, my God, how am I supposed to <laughs> pick something even within your own product line? We have this thing called Hypnotic Awakenings, um, which is a um, relatively brief CD set. I think it's three CDs. Um, and what it does is it's a presentation on how to identify the imprint that you got through no fault of your own. All the well-meaning people who, who gave you advice or direction along your life ended up filling your head full of crap. Um, I show you how to identify all these imprints, how to break those imprints so that you can not only free yourself from that self-sabotage, but also take all the energy that, uh, that's freed up and start to apply it through a six-step process where you can go ahead and get your life stable in order. Because frankly, Frank, um, no one makes serious change in their life until you're at a relatively stable moment. I mean, I get these heartrending calls where people say, oh my God, I'm down to like my, my last $10 and I, I'm living out of my car with one package of ramen noodles. Uh, you know, what can you tell me to help me? And I tell them, you know, find a place to live, get a job. Um, get your life relatively stable so you can start doing serious work on yourself. The work you do on yourself will pay off every day for the rest of your life. Um, and so I steer people towards these entry-level conditioning exercises so you get stable, you get wide awake, you figure out what it is you really want to do, and then you go out and get it. So before somebody should be studying hypnosis or self-improvement, they should be taking care of their basic needs. Is that what I'm getting here? Pretty much. And um, one of the basic needs you have is to identify the things that are holding you back, identify the people, the situations that are holding you back, learn how to overcome those, get rid of your self-limiting beliefs, and then out of all the things that you can imagine, I mean, like one of the exercises I teach is how to know when you're bullshitting yourself about your goals. And there's a very simple, verifiable technique to know when you're just fantasizing or when you're thinking about something that your subconscious will actually help you get. Now let's go to the idea of bettering yourself through hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that, and I'm just, I'm going to be asking this as a, as a novice here, mm -hmm. are we talking about uh, self-inductions, putting yourself into trance, does the change work actually happen while in trance, is it an instantaneous change that occurs? What's the best method to use hypnosis for change? It, it definitely involves trance work. 
All trance means is a state of unnatural fascination. So you make the thing that you are thinking about so compelling and so clean. That is, you don't build in distractions. You don't build in self-limitations. You, you just build a very powerful, resource-rich experience, and then you allow yourself to have that experience. That's what we call trance work. And by rehearsing change in trance work, well, two things occur. So one is you blow past all your previous self-limitations, but the second thing is you can, exper you can experiment in an error-free environment. So you can go ahead and try out alternate paths. Let the movie run. Find out just how it comes out this way, that way. How do you feel about that? And while you do that, see, the thing is, change is as difficult as you want to make it. If you believe change, it takes a long time and it's extraordinarily difficult, well, that is the hypnosis that you're working on yourself. And by golly, that's exactly how the change will occur. If you believe that you can walk away from your past as easily as you might set down a suitcase and walk away from that, well, then you can experience very powerful, very profound change, and it happens in an instant. One last question before we go to our next commercial break, Mark. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that hypnosis cannot solve or actually fix? Um, organic physical problems. Like there was a client out in California who uh, was one of the last polio patients, and he wanted me to help him become a championship runner. Can't do that. Um, and hypnosis probably should not be used on diagnosable mental illness, um, both for practicality's sake and because of the legal challenges. Thank you, Mark. We're going to be going to commercial when we come back. More with Major Mark Cunningham here on Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles, Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, a man's guide to the emotional needs of women. Ladies, does your man squash your inner vixen? When you ask him to repeat what you have just said to him, does he look at you like a deer caught in the headlights? Does he think that leaving the game on while you talk to him is a good idea? Is his favorite phrase, yes dear, you are absolutely right? Does wife or girlfriend mean boring and dull to him? Ladies, don't you wish that he knows what you mean when you ask him if you look fat? Then you need to buy him the book, Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, A Man's Guide to the Emotional Needs of Women. On sale now at franktalks.com. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by From Loser to Seducer by Frank B. Kermit. Ladies, is there a man in your life that got dumped for being clingy, needy, or was told he was a loser, but you still think he's a nice guy and want to help him? He could be a relative or even a friend, and you know he needs the help. Do you want to be the one to give him the gift that will change his life forever? How about the gift of a great biography? Buy him the book, From Loser to Seducer, by Frank B. Kermit. It is the story of a nice guy who triumphs over his inner demons to find his own hidden power. Help the nice guy in your life discover his inner seducer to find his soulmate. Buy this book now at franktalks.com. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, a man's guide to the emotional needs of women. What would your life be like if you knew exactly what to say and do with women? This book is for the guy that simply wants to learn how to handle women's tests by addressing her emotional needs. By this, you create the type of attraction that will make her see you as the one she was destined to be with. This book will teach you how to get the woman you want and how to keep her. Everything out of her mouth is a test is the Rosetta Stone for men to understand exactly what a woman means when she speaks and how to respond. Is that worth changing your life forever? Buy this book at franktalks.com now. You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles, and I'm Frank because I have to be in studio today with Major Mark Cunningham. How you doing there, Mark? I'm good. I'm enjoying this. Oh, me too. This is one of the uh, first seduction-related interviews you've done in a long, long time, I believe. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Uh, when I stepped away from doing the seduction seminars, um, people assumed I just kind of disappeared into the mainstream hypnosis world. Well, I have a question for you about this seduction community. Sure. This is something that I've discussed with a lot of other seduction instructors and gurus. Where do you think the future of this community 
is going to go? Well, I can I can render opinion on where I would like it to go, which is I would like to see it broaden its focus. In other words, the seduction cannot be an end in and of itself. It, it's like taking a tiny little slice of life that's not all that difficult and blowing it up into this enormous perceived um, problem and associated solutions. I would much rather see these people who do have something going on broadening their take out to teach more about what does it mean to be a man in a modern world. And specifically, once you have honed your seduction skills and you've developed yourself to the point where you're no longer worried about this, it's reflexive, well, what then do you do in terms of finding women that you genuinely enjoy and building them into your life? What is that like? How do you treat these women on an ongoing basis? What kind of opportunities for pleasures and resources do you have, and what happens next? You know, I really like this line of thinking that you're embarking on. I've seen this community completely expand on the topic of pickup. It's all about the pickup. It's all about uh, your next conquest. And one fundamental thing that's missing, even amongst some of the instructors and gurus out there, is the lack of relationship management skills. Mm -hmm. And it amazes me that more people haven't learned to, to delve into maintaining relationships because a lot of these well-known gurus are able to collect a lot of numbers, collect a lot of lays. They can collect a lot of women in their life. They can't keep the women around. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, Frank. <laughs> well, I'm not mentioning names because I'm not stupid. Yeah. You know, but, but, I mean, that is the case. Um, one of the areas that I focus on in my own work really is about relationship management. I mean, that is the whole point that we're here, is to have relationships with women. Right. At least I, I think that the majority of guys who study seduction get into it because either they want that one girl that got away, or they just want to get themselves a girlfriend, or they want to get married. They don't want to be alone. They, some of them even want to have families. I'm, I'm part of that category. Mm -hmm. And learning seduction and pickup, is a wonderful step in that process. You need to at least master some of the beginnings of how to initiate a relationship. But how to maintain a relationship is a whole other skill set that I think is just not getting its due attention. Well, to be fair, Frank, when a guy is at the point where he can't imagine walking up and talking to a woman he actually desires, the idea of how do I move through the world accepting as a matter of course that highly desirable women will be willing to walk through fire just to make me happy because that's that's how they want to relate to me. I mean, that's total science fiction for these guys. Yeah, it would help if the role leaders and models in the uh, seduction universe would address themselves to the broader problems of, well, as I say, how do you become fully human? How do you move through the world as a man? You know what, I fully agree, and... One of the things that I'll say it again about you, you actually really like women. You you come from a place of genuine love for women, which I think is missing in a number of the seduction gurus out there who really have um, an incredible amount of hatred and frustration with women. That's true. And there's a, there's a dirty little trick I used to play on guys in seduction seminars. When they were talking about these highly intrusive, overt techniques they were going to use to manipulate women, I would begin to use those techniques on the guys in the seminars. And inevitably, it just caused an uproar in the seminar room. And they'd, they'd be going on, why are you treating me like this? Why are you trying to manipulate me? Why are you holding me down? Why, why are you slamming me? And then I would explain what they were doing, and they were just absolutely dumbfounded. And I said, well, isn't it okay that I do these things to you? And they're going, well, hell no. <laughs> why would you treat me like this? And I'm saying, well, why would you treat a woman like that? How do you expect she's going to respond to you? So many of these intrusive, heavy-handed techniques are actually a form of screening. You drive away the quality women, and the only ones who respond are the ones who are weak and damaged and are willing to put up with that kind of crap. Amen to that. When I run into, and this is some advice I'm going to ask for, from you directly here, mm -hmm. when I run into a guy who's just got an incredible amount of hatred for women, I can understand it. I can understand where he's coming from. 
uh, my autobiography, From Loser to Seducer, When I Had Hit a Rock Bottom. I certainly didn't have a, a lot of love in my heart for women at that time. I right. can understand it. I can relate to it. It is a frustration that completely takes over. Mm-hmm. At this point, what I tell a guy is, yeah, you are frustrated, but that's just because it's your own fault. You have to take responsibility for it. And you got to remember that in the end, if what you want is a relationship, any relationship built on hate is not going to be a relationship worth having in the long run. I'd like to know what what else would you say to a guy in that position? They need to purge themselves of the negative emotion. Okay, what what happened? The event that led to them feeling that way almost certainly was not as bad as they think it was. But they had a horrible emotional reaction to it. And that's what they're, kind of, they're carrying around. And they're, frankly, they're the last person on earth who's still upset about it. And so until they learn to let go of that negative emotion, let go uh, of the hold that that negative emotion has over their life, they cannot see around it. They can't see new avenues that lead to pleasure or opportunity or fulfillment or success. You know, they have to get rid of that crap. And then they need to go out and start building up a track record of success in all parts of their life. You know, a lot of times guys could really get over a lot of this crap if they would just go out and do some physical exercise. Get out in the air, okay? Get, you know, exercise your body. Don't, I'm not talking about go to the gym. I'm saying, you know, go for walks, go running, go ride a bike, go out and talk to people. Just deliberately do not do the things that you're so upset about and get a sense of perspective back in your life. Well, I want to talk about the pleasure in your life, Mark. When you do the work you do, make help guys make changes, help guys achieve new levels of experience, what pleasure does that give you? It's phenomenal. I mean, we have a set of, we call them testimonial books. Um, guys write us testimonial letters about um, what they did, um, what they learned from me, the impact it had on their lives, and whenever I'm having kind of a down moment, one of the staff, you know, the girls will bring in the testimonial books and just drop them on my desk and say, read this till you feel better. And I start, I just start flipping through these things and finding out all the incredible positive impact I've had on people's lives. And I realize, that, oh, my God, you know, I, I've got to keep doing this. It's, at this point, I'm not doing it for the money. I can make a lot more money doing something else. But every day I've got people telling me, that I've changed their life for the better forever. And there's there's no other field where you get that kind of immediate positive feedback. To do this life, doing what you do, what would you say are some of the sacrifices you've had to make in order to continue being Mark Cunningham, the renegade hypnotist? I had to give up being normal. Okay, There are a lot of people who look down on the fact that I work with men on issues like seduction or lifestyle. Um, I've, I've done a lot of work in the alternate sexuality community, and I've taken an awful lot of crap for that. Even working as a hypnotist puts me so far outside the mainstream. If I said I was a psychologist doing the same work, it'd be easily understood. I'd be a box that people could put me in, and everything would be fine. Um, it's, not a, it's not an easy lifestyle when you consciously make the decision to never be normal again. One of the last questions here, Mark, before we have to sign off. Sure. Where do you see yourself 10 and 15 years from now? Um, actually, I'd like to be doing a lot more controversial work, to tell you the truth. Um, I, I'll, at that point, I'll be wrapped up with my mainstream career. All my teaching materials will be canned and out there, and I'll be free to go ahead and teach some of the things that I know how to do that are just so amazing, so radically transforming that, um, well, how, I mean, they're, they're highly controversial now. I can't imagine they're going to be any more acceptable in just 10 years. What are we talking about here? Being able to totally transform your personality within a couple of hours, for example. Being able to, by totally transform your personality, I mean become a whole other person. Now, okay. are we talking here? Are we talking here stage hypnosis? Or are we talking here legitimately? Legitimately. Okay. It's uh, in my researches. I've done an awful lot of research projects, and I've I've discovered some ways of manipulating. Well, I'm going to be teasing people next month in my class on regression and memory. But um, there are things you can do by manipulating an individual's sense of time and memory 
so that they literally become a completely separate person in a matter of a couple hours. So okay. it's highly controversial in the therapy field. Um, and when you start talking about doing this in terms of recreational conditioning, <laughs> yeah, yeah, people get uh, people. It's kind of some people get wildly upset about it. Other people are like, "Oh my God, just tell me how to do this." Well, I mean, I'm listening to this now, and I'm thinking, well, on the pro side, you have the ability to help people who have gone through such traumatic experiences right. that by almost eliminating the memories or becoming a whole new person who's either better able to deal with the trauma or becoming a person who's never had to deal with that trauma directly because you've, you've played around with the memory, I can see that as a positive thing. But it also, uh, I mean, it comes into the, the whole, you know, do we play God here? Yeah, oh, yeah, and in the wrong hands, do you just uh, have people out there creating their own little love zombies? You know, and, you know, this is a very interesting question, and we're going we're gonna to try to stretch this a little bit, just see if we can get in this last one question here. Um, is it better for people, sooner, yeah, <laughs> is it better for people to know all the truth and the tactics out there, or do you think that it should only be in the hands of a select few who will wield it with responsibility? Well, I, I, I got beat up pretty badly this past weekend where I was in a meeting of hypnotists, and, and they were saying that I had an obligation to let this stuff loose on the world. Right now, I don't agree with that because I know from my experience with the seduction community, just teaching guys how to use elementary hypnotic technique in conversation, guys are going out there and doing things which I would never condone, never accept, and I wish I hadn't taught them how to do. Now, if I give them actual high-impact, irreversible <laughs> hypnotic technique, I'm not so sure they're all going to go out and do sane and beneficial things. Mark, this was a fantastic show. Thank you so much for your willingness to come out and talk to us here on Frank Talks about uh, your life in the seduction community and your life as a hypnotist helping people. You bet, Frank. I had a good time. We definitely invite you to come back uh, to do another Frank Talks with us. Sure, just give me a call. I will. You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. Good night, everybody. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the Adult Male Virgin Seminar and Telephone Consultations. Ladies, is your boyfriend an adult male virgin? Is he so shy and insecure that you'd need to take the initiative, but you really wish he would just be the man and take the lead? Does he think holding hands and sweet cheek kisses is fulfilling? Does he think the G-Spot is the name of a new club? Ladies, if his idea of a night of fun means you get to be player number two in his latest video game, then get him the gift that will give you both pleasure. The Adult Mill Virgin Seminar and Telephone Consultations. Only available at franktalks.com. Frank helps adult boys become men. love, sex, dating, or relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best-selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at franktalks.com. 
What do you do when you feel like a fool? When your heart has been broken again? Pick up the phone or get onto Skype and talk on a private session. Yeah, yeah. To turn things around Just sign up at franktalks.com Yeah, get by with help from Frank Talks mm-hmm. I get by with a little help from Frank Talks mm-hmm. Time to try a little help from Frank Talks Rate going around. certain just read the reviews Frank knows his stuff and Frank several goods Good love can soon come